Hi, in this video I'm going to talk to you about Qatar legalisation. I'll tell you what legalisation means, what sort of documents we commonly see that require legalisation for Qatar, and also how you might go about the process yourself or the process that we would follow if we were completing the legalisation for you. So, to start with, legalisation. It's a, an odd term, one that most people aren't familiar with, and it can also be called something else, which just confuses things completely. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as attestation, others um, authentication, but all in all, they all mean the same thing. And what it's talking about is taking a document that's been issued in one country and make it ready so that it can be used officially in another country. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, and I, I find it easiest if you actually think about it backwards. So let's start with uh, the example of somebody who's moving to Qatar, uh, take up a, a job in Doha, um, and they need to provide for their visa or for their work permit, they need to provide a copy of their degree certificate. The first thing that the employer is going to want to see is that it has received a stamp from the, um, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Doha in Qatar. If they have that stamp on it, they'll recognise the document can be, has been seen by all the necessary authorities and they'll accept it and can use that document to apply for your work permit. Now, in order to, uh, for the Minister of Foreign Affairs to stamp the document, what they're looking for is that the Qatar Embassy in London has also stamped the document. So there's, one of, there's another one of the steps that's required. The Qatar Embassy in London is looking to see that the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, or the FCO, has attached to the document something called an apostille, which is a sort of an A5 slip of paper that's attached to the reverse of the document, which um, is basically the UK having checked to see that either the, the seal or the signature on that document is, is accurate and, and legitimate, and if it is, they will put their apostille onto that document. In the case of a degree certificate, because the Foreign and Commonwealth Office doesn't have uh, knowledge of all of the different uh, universities and the, and the registrars at those universities, what they often want to see is that the, uh, the document has been signed by a UK solicitor um, or a notary public um, and often when that's happening, what we will tend to do is take a, a certified copy of a document and they will certify that that copy is genuine, a genuine uh, copy of the original document and they'll sign it as such. And because of that, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office will attach their apostille because they recognise the, the signature of the solicitor or the notary public that has signed the document. And by doing it that way, there's, a num there's four steps involved in that process. Um, right at the very beginning, when we start with your original document, which is obviously really important to you and uh, you worked very hard for and you don't really want it being signed and stamped and things, having a certified copy uh, taken of the document in the first place means that we can keep the original document safe, secure, and whilst all of the processes are happening, it's not being it's not being sent all around the country and potentially being lost or, or damaged. So that's the process that's involved with with uh, how you legalise a document. Um, we commonly see um, a number of different types of academic qualification that might be used. It might be a birth or a marriage certificate. Um, if um, one person is moving out and then their spouse is moving with them, the marriage certificate would be needed to, um, to give the residence permit for the, the spouse of the person who's actually getting the job. Um, and similarly, if, the, if, if you're travelling across there with uh, children, then their birth certificates would need to be done as well. Um, Qatar is a slightly uh, unusual country in that when you're um, processing a degree qualification, um, then they require two additional documents to be legalised at the same time. And that's a, a transcript um, that's, that goes alongside with the original degree um, and also a, a letter from the university that, that um, states a number of key bits of information uh, to prove that the person who's presenting the document did actually study there and in particular they studied and it wasn't a, a distance learning qualification. That's really important. 
uh, and we have sample letters of, of what that needs to say. Um, with the Qatari Embassy in London, they are very, very, very specific and even one word out of place will mean that they'll reject the document. So you might have had it certified, you might have had the apostille added, it gets to the Qatar Embassy and they just reject it because of this one, this, this mistake of this one word. One of the benefits of our service is that we'll have the document checked beforehand and all of the supporting documents just to make sure that, that once they do reach the Qatar Embassy they will be accepted, which obviously is important. Now you can do this yourself, it just means following all of the steps in order so that you don't make any mistakes and so that eventually when it arrives in Qatar that the document isn't rejected by any of the people that need, need to see it. So just to recap, in order in the forward order rather than the reverse order, first step in our opinion is to take the documents that you've had, that's the original document and in the case of a degree certificate, the transcript and the supporting letter and have them certified by a solicitor. Um, that's a much cheaper way of doing it than getting a notary public to do it and it's perfectly legal and legitimate. Um, have them take a copy of that, those three documents and certify each one individually as a true copy of the original. One of the important things to note here is that the solicitor that you use must be registered with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, otherwise um, when it gets to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office there'll be a, a delay in, uh, in processing it whilst they try to establish whether or not that signature is, is, is accurate based on the, the, the solicitor that signed it. Once that's been done, it needs to go to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Um, they have offices in Milton Keynes and London and ask them to, to apply the apostille onto that document for you. Again, once that's been done, it needs to go to the Qatari Embassy in London and ask them to apply the, the legalisation stamp, the consular legalisation stamp onto that document. Um, and they will do that, assuming that the apostille has been uh, correctly applied to the document. And then the last step is to get it flown out to, uh, to Doha and take it to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Doha and ask them to put their stamp on it. At that point, you can then present it to your employer and the, uh, and the documents should be satisfactory for uh, the obtaining of your work permit. Now that might have seemed like a, a lot of steps to take and you might not have the time or inclination to do that. If that's you, then we'd be happy to provide this service for you. Just get in touch with us and speak to one of our advisors. We can provide you with a same day quote and get you started pretty much immediately. Thanks for watching and I look forward to speaking to you soon.